chapter 13, in which the young man learns to express his desires in life. You have already taken the first step, explained the millionaire, writing the formula and the quantified objective, an amount and a deadline. Now for the second step. Take a sheet of paper and write down everything you want out of life. Your dream must be precise if you want it to take shape. I'll show you what I asked for in the beginning. It was many years ago, so I'll translate the amounts into today's dollars. The following financial goals within five years. A house worth $500,000. A second home in the country worth $300,000. A new BMW worth $60,000. An old rebuilt Mercedes worth $40,000. No more personal debt. $300,000 in cash and other liquid assets. $300,000 invested in the stock market and other investments. $500,000 invested in property, which grows to $3 million in equity within five years from the time of purchase. My non-financial goals were two-week vacations at least three times a year whenever I felt like taking them, to be my own boss and not work more than 30 hours a week, intelligent friends involved in business and art, a loving and charming wife and beautiful children, a fulfilling family life, a maid and a cook to free us of everyday tasks. The young man was overwhelmed by the picture the instant millionaire had just drawn, it looks too good to be true, doesn't it, said the millionaire. I too thought that I'd gone a bit overboard by the time I finished outlining what I wanted. But my hesitation and fears were due to a negative mental attitude and my ingrained habit of thinking small. I was doing this without even realizing it. Making out a list like this is exactly the way to discover your narrow vision of things. Those who consider this kind of life plan unachievable simply think small. Everything being relative under the sun, this ambition is hardly exorbitant. Most wealthy people would be exceedingly unhappy if they had to make do with the paltry conditions I have just sketched out. Many of them live in houses worth millions, employ dozens of servants, and own ranches, private planes, tropical islands, racehorses, and so on. Many of them don't even think they're rich. In any case, not that rich, since they always have friends or business associates with more money than they have. Why do they find this kind of lifestyle natural? Well, they were either born rich or they thought big and managed to achieve their dreams. They never believed that they couldn't do it. If you start out with the idea that you can't, you immediately block yourself. So do this exercise. Write down what you want out of life in minute detail without holding anything back. It will show you the limits of your ambitions and your mentality. What are you really dreaming of? What would you be satisfied with? It's important to fill in as many details as possible. The only thing to avoid is choosing your dream home at a specific address because that particular house may never be available and you'd be running the risk of never seeing your dream come true despite the power of your desire and will. But other than that, be as specific as possible. There's one other important thing to consider and that is the possibility that your dream is harmful to others. Always keep in mind that if your goals are harmful to anyone, they must be avoided for your own good as well as for the good of others. This portrait will show you who you really are. It will become the concrete shape of your desires. Your thoughts are alive. The more specific your portrait, the better the chances are for it to materialize. Details are very important. In mysterious and unexpected ways, your thoughts, nourished regularly, bring about the circumstances that allow them to become reality. The young man looked a bit skeptical. I know all this seems utopian, the millionaire said. But as I told you, the stronger your mind becomes, the more you realize there's nothing it can't accomplish. Miracles happen. Don't you find that, comparatively speaking, realizing a dream as ordinary as having a $500,000 house is a rather banal achievement? Don't you believe that the mind is much more powerful than many people think and above all believe it to be?
Remember what Christ said, faith moves mountains. To use your mind effectively, you've got to start believing in its power, or at least be open to the possibility that it might be as powerful as I'm telling you it is. So draw up your list. I need time to think, said the young man. That's good. Think about what I've just told you. Part of you believes what I'm saying. A highly creative part of you has been blinded by years of faulty education and unfortunate experiences, but it's still alive. It's only waiting for a sign from you, and it will show you how to become lord and master of your existence instead of a tormented slave helplessly buffeted by events. To do that, you must learn to listen to that tiny inner voice sleeping in the depths of your mind and give it more freedom to express itself. This is your intuition, the voice of your soul. It's the way to your secret power. The more often you repeat the formula, be still and know that I am God, the more powerful your inner voice will become and the more surely it will guide you. The young man felt a bit overloaded. He was ready to take a break. Come, said the millionaire. Let's relax and take a walk in the garden. I'd love to take my last walk here with a friend. These somber words saddened the young man. It wasn't the first time he had made such an illusion. <laughs> 